Constructing phylogenetic trees is basically a statistical clustering algorithm. As such, we have numerous tools that have been developed for desktop computers and online databases for working with molecular and morphological data, often together. The primary task of phylogenetic systematics is to take observations about taxa that we can observe today, whether from living species or populations or fossil remains, to make inferences about hypothetical unknown ancestors of these taxa. We remember that clades or monophyletic groups are the natural genealogical groupings of taxa that include all of the relatives of a single common ancestor that share one or more derived characteristics from that ancestor. When a small number of appropriate homologous characteristics are chosen, finding clades can be done by hand, but in practice biologists are interested in relationships among many taxa using numerous characters. We also need to account for homoplasies, which are trait reversals, parallel evolution, or convergences that can send conflicting or misleading signals compared to other characters. The result of this is often the generation of multiple and sometimes many possible trees that need to be sorted in order to decide on the phylogeny that makes the most sense. In science, we tend to prefer simple hypotheses, that is, explanations that require the fewest assumptions. When we interpret homoplasies in characters, we introduce assumptions to our phylogenetic hypotheses. Using the parsimony approach, we would prefer the tree that requires the fewest character state changes. This is because of our preference for the simplest hypothesis, as well as the expectation that evolution would tend to work in the simplest way possible. I mean, if we assumed evolution always took the most complicated route, then phylogeny reconstruction and most of historical biology would be impossible for us to do. We often compare trees in terms of their length. In this example of carnivorans, the shortest possible tree is 12 steps long. Each clade is defined by one or two shared derived characters, and there are no reversals, although there is a polytomy at the base of the canomorph clade. On the other hand, if we were to move seals out of that clade, the polytomy resolves, but we see numerous cases of homoplasies, both the reversal of trait states as well as the parallel or independent evolution of traits among the three groups of marine carnivores. Parsimony is simple and elegant, but it does have its problems. One in particular is long branch attraction, which is common when evolutionary changes happen at different rates in different branches of phylogeny. This is particularly a problem for rapidly changing DNA loci. They can accumulate a lot of character changes, and because there are only four nucleotides that can get slotted into those spaces, it's common to interpret chance convergences as synapomorphies. The effect of this is that two lineages would appear to be closely related by error. They often cause the long branches to be arranged closer to the root of the tree. Distance methods are also used to identify clades on a phylogeny. In this case, the trees are built from counts of differences among taxa rather than from original data. The distances can be calculated as the number of differences in DNA nucleotides of a given gene or um, differences in amino acids of a protein, depending on the source of information. Different algorithms exist to determine those distances. If we were going to make a tree arranging four taxa, there are three possible unrooted phylogenies. The first step in this process is to find the distance between each pair of taxa under consideration and place it on a matrix. The bottom half of this matrix is blank because it's symmetrical, so that wouldn't add any new information. The algorithm then arranges the sister group relationships on the tree so that each taxon is about equally far away from the others. This is shown diagrammatically here as the length of the line that's bent to the shape of the unrooted tree. This arrangement here is not a particularly good fit because visually those lines are different lengths, but here the topology, which is the branching pattern of the tree, better fits the branch lengths. The summary branch length then show the distance along each branch from every node. Distance methods are computationally fast for large numbers of characters or taxa, so they're great options for molecular data. But one thing that can be an issue is that they do not work on any underlying evolutionary model. We say that they are phonetic or appearance-based in approach, so they can get confused by analogous characters. 
This means the characters that are actually homoplasies can result in trees that don't represent the accurate true phylogeny, or at least the best hypothesis of relationships that we can recover from the characters that we used. Statistical algorithms alone cannot choose the root of a tree. The most common way to choose a root is simply to assign an outgroup, which is a related taxon that we have evidence diverged from the taxa under consideration before those in-group taxa. Choosing an appropriate root can allow us to trace character evolution or the pattern of geographic dispersal of those taxa. An outgroup can't be chosen randomly, though. It requires sufficient knowledge of the natural history or fossil record of the group in question. Molecular rooting methods can be used, too, and they're based on rates of molecular substitution. We can establish our level of confidence in the validity of a tree with different methods, including bootstrap resampling and, and odds ratio testing. Briefly, Bootstrap resampling repeatedly and randomly chooses a subset of characters to see how frequently a given branching pattern is found for those same taxa. Odds ratio testing is an actual statistical test that compares the performance of a tree with or without constraining a given group to be monophyletic. One last concept is that not every character is independent of the others. When using the comparative method across species to view the evolution of characters, some taxa will have more characters in common just because they are closely related to one another and because those characters are functionally related to one another. The method of phylogenetic independent contrasts allows us to account for similarity that is due to common ancestry alone, rather than assuming that every trait change is independent of every other change on a data matrix. The construction and interpretation of the meaning of evolutionary trees is central to comparative biology. Not every biologist, or even every evolutionary biologist, is a systematist, but all of us need to be able to use these tools to understand the historical pattern of evolutionary change.